The combination of Coors Field and a potent Rockies offense can be a house of horrors for visitors to the Mile High City. One giant who did just fine in Denver is Justin Maxwell, playing great defense and homering last night to continue a hot streak that started against the Dodgers. It's a National League West showdown next. Back-to-back -back nights here at Coors Field as we get ready for Giants baseball. This is game two of this three-game series, Giants and Rockies. Hi again, everybody. I'm Gwen Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, the Giants haven't beaten the Rockies this year, and Hudson has never beaten the Rockies. Maybe he's due. Well, I would say he is due. On yes. paper, you say he's 0-2 with an ERA in the sevens here at Coors Field. Never won. Well, okay. What about the other guy? Well, Jorge De La Rosa against the Giants in this ballpark, 6-1. and one. Yeah, I think the key is simple. Catch the ground balls and keep Charlie Blackman and Corey Dickerson off base. Collectively against Hudson, they have hit 344. Those will be the keys tonight. And hit six out of the ballpark. That's what we're talking about. Stay tuned. We will take you to our Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update, and we'll do that right after this.
is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blazin' Chicken Sandwich. By Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. And by DraftKings.com. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com with the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter promo code ORANGE for free entry. we got a nice night here at Coors Field as we get ready for game two in this three-game series. Our game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free. Visit online for park hours at beachboardwalk.com. 63 degrees here at the yard. You see the winds at 11 miles per hour. Humidity is low and it is cloudy. Jorge De La Rosa, the lefty, is going to pitch, and this is the lineup that he'll face. I hope he got the day off last night. He did pinch hit. He will lead it off, followed by Duffy, Pagan, and then Buster Posey. Justin Maxwell will hit in the fifth slot, and then it's Susack, McGee, and Crawford. And Hudson will pitch in bat nine. So we're waiting for the Rockies to take the field. A lot going on before the ball game. And they're waiting for a lot of people to get off the field. The Giants lost last night by a final of six to four. And you can see walking with Tim Hudson is Andrew Susak. He will get the start tonight, and Buster Posey will be at first. 61 degrees here, and it's a ballpark that normally has a lot of carry to right field. Tonight, the wind is blowing out to left. So they'll, this will be a very live ballpark. Balls in the air will be scary. Keep the ball down, hit it on the ground, or at least that's what you'd like to have happen if you're on the hill. And on that hill tonight for the Colorado Rockies will be Jorge De La Rosa. De La Rosa, 6'1", 215 pounder. He's 33 years old. And uh, he's in his 11th year. Monterey, Mexico. When you take your bats against De La Rosa, you're going to see a fastball that goes low to mid 90s. He's got a curveball and a slider. More sliders than curveballs. He also throws a split. And he will, too, enforce seeing that fastball. Very tough here in the confines of Coors Field against the Giants here in Colorado. Six and one with a 3.84 ERA. So he's really had great success against them. And uh, our cold hard facts, they're brought to you by Frostburg Coors Light. Or they, or a, we talk about the 6 1 record, 3.84 ERA. And he averages less than a whole run per nine innings pitch. And that's amazing. 11 starts at AT&T. The Giants, however, own him. 3 and 5 is ERA 4.30. And he averages uh, still less than one home run per nine innings, which is good. He's not a guy that puts the ball in the air, which is why he's so suited for Coors Field. He's a guy that puts the ball in the ground. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind him. Starting in the Rockies outfield from left to right. It'll be Dickerson, Blackman, and Gonzalez. Really good arms in center and right field. Tulowitzki and Arenado on the left side of the infield. LeMayhew and Bordeaux on the right side. Dick Huntley will be in the squad putting down the sides. The Giants at Coors Field are 75 and 93 like that. It's a 4 4 6. Really not a surprise. This is just a tough place to win. And the team that has the last at bat, I mean, that's a tremendous advantage here. It's an offensive as the yard is. So here's Nori Aoki who came in as a pinch hitter in the game last night and struck out. Did not start. And he comes in hitting at 311. So we are just about ready for baseball. De La Rosa, as Mike may have mentioned, very, very deliberate. And he can put you to sleep if you're a hitter. And here's the first pitch of the ball game. And it's a bit high, called by John Hirschbeck. And Hirschbeck 
is a guy who's good to throw to. I mean, I, I, I like his strike zone. It's a wide zone. He, he looks for knees. You get more knee-high strikes and belt-high strikes, but you have width on both sides of the plate. And there's a strike to Aoki. So we get underway at 613 here in Denver. That's only just three minutes late. Not too bad. It would never happen in our part. There's a bouncing ball foul and a new bat for Nori Aoki. So in your first at bat, you lose your bat. Well, it's only an issue if you have no bats left. Giants players, they travel with about a dozen. It's kind of a, a defensive hack. A lot of reach, not a lot of, of lower body strength in that swing. A dozen? Yeah, that's what we got in a year in 1985. <laughs> and only four of those were good ones. Down and away to Aoki. It's two balls and two strikes. On deck is Duffy. And then Pagan. And then Posey and Maxwell. So here's the 2 2 to Nori Aoki. And it's in the dirt. Three and two. What's the problem? His last outing against the Padres, he really got roughed up, only went two in. He said he could not throw the breaking balls for strikes. They really were not good to him and could not rely upon him. He got too predictable with the fastball and he got torched. Padres jumped on him. And the payoff is spoiled by Aoki. It stays at three and two. Nice catch, I assume, because we hear the applause, and there's a gentleman who got it. While eating a cha cha bowl, unbelievable. And another payoff, here it is. And he flips him out into left field for Dickerson. And that's how this game gets started on a fly ball to the left. So here's Duffy. Duffy hitting at 270. He's got a home run. He's got seven driven in. And he's starting tonight instead of Joe Panic. De La Rosa's first pitch is a strike. He's got that little hesitation right before he comes to the plate. And it's just a pause to get him gathered on his backside. Early in De La Rosa's career, he was a glider. He would jump that front side out a lot of times. It would be problematic for him to, to get in the strike zone. But this gathers him on the backside. A little pause. It's just all about balance. It's a nice little timing mechanism. Well, and as a hitter, you can't time that. you got to wait. It really is a good thing. The only problem with it is you can't do it in the stretch. Duffy follows the 0 2 pitch out of play. Take a look at very small step upright right here, get balance on the back leg. Now his hips are cocked, and the front side comes out in one piece. It's a delivery that really turned his career around. It allowed him to command five different types of movement. Duffy bounces it foul right past Roberto Kelly. Hands right along that rail bring their gloves and. You can do some damage down there with souvenirs. One and two. Pagan to follow. 27 hits in the game yesterday. 15 for Colorado, 12 for the Giants. And 
Lefty strikes out swinging on that breaking ball down and in. Sweeping back foot slider. Lefty could not lay off. It's not the first time Duffy has seen De La Rosa. He does have a hit in two at bats, now in three at bats. So anything that De La Rosa throws him is not going to be a surprise. It's always been a real good strikeout pitch for right handed hitters for De La Rosa. No intention at all to throw that thing in the strike zone, trying to bounce it right there towards the back foot, not literally on the back foot. So here's Pagan, who's got decent numbers lifetime against De La Rosa. And he takes high and wide. He's seven for 30 with four doubles. On the air, hitting 329. See the slugging percentage on base percentage. Everything very good for Angel Pagan, and he's healthy. I said this about Angel Pagan. He said. At one point in spring training, that you know, when I feel right, I want to play all the time, and he has. He's had one day off. Three and zero with Buster Posey on deck. Looked like Pagan was going to take all the way. Yeah, I would expect the same thing on this 3-0 pitch. One. Still timed it. Watched it all the way back in the catcher's glove. That's how you take a pitch. If you know you're going to take, and that 3-0 counts, get something out of the pitch. Pagan wraps it in the left field, and it's going to fall. So the first hit in the game belongs to Angel Pagan, and that'll bring up Buster Posey. Buster at first base tonight. He took a very unusual 0 for 4. He doesn't usually take 0 for fours in this part. Well, you know, he's in one of those grooves right now. He's hit the ball hard and it's finding gloves. Yep. His very first at bat, we thought for a second that he might have hit the ball out of the park last night. On the ground, sharply passed Arnado. Let's see if Pagan can score. He is low flying around third. He is indeed going to score, and the Giants are on the board. It's one nothing. And you know what Buster Posey is saying as he's standing on second base? How did I get it past Arenado? <laughs> Catch that, Arenado. Nolan Arenado, the Gold Glove third baseman, just spectacular defensive player. Hard to get the ball by him, but Posey does. And you know what? We'll make it our Ford right choice. The breaking ball lays out their middle end. Buster hits it right down the line. They had him played off the bag a little bit. And that's all the lane that he needed. And with two outs, but gone a great jump. A little two out thunder. So here's Maxwell, who's swinging the bat extremely well and does love this ballpark. Maxwell went two for three last night, and one of the hits a home run. So Posey at second. A, a little tardy. Right by him. Time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. Last night, Justin Maxwell, home run, the first pitch he saw of the game off of Eddie Butler. He did the top of the second. And that was a big boy home run. That's our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. Overshift is on for Maxwell, and he fouls this one back. And right now, De La Rosa is just throwing fastballs at him. Susak is on deck. Maxwell, I think Maxwell is the one who called time. Be pitch number 22 for De La Rosa in this inning. Maxwell bounces it to Arenado. 
And his throw is perfect and that'll end the inning. Giants on the board, a single and a double after one half. Giants won. Rockies coming up. And the lineup that Hudson will be facing looks like this. It's a good lineup. Blackman, Dickerson, and Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki had the night off yesterday. He did pitch hit. Morneau will be the cleanup hitter. Then it's Arenado with an eight-game hitting streak, followed by Gonzalez, Hundley, and LeMahieu. And then pitching and batting night is De La Rosa. On the hill tonight for the Giants will be Tim Hudson, making start number four of the year. 0-2 with a 393 ERA for Hudson. You're going to see a high ease sink. Occasionally he'll hit 90. He'll foresee the ball as well. He's got a curveball slider, change up, split. He'll throw a lot of stuff, and everything he has will, will put the ball on the ground. And the big key tonight is how those ground balls find leather. He has not had great look in this ballpark, and it's simply because balls get through this infield. This is not an a very I mean, an extremely fast infield. It's pretty fair, actually. A lot slower than what the Giants saw back in at and their home ballpark. So here's Blackman. Blackman hitting 269. Had a couple of hits last night. And Hudson throws high for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Blackman six for 19 in his lifetime at bats against Hudson. He's been on fire in the last five days. And a strike. Called by John Hirschbeck. One ball and one strike. I love the look that you get here from the center field camera at Coors Field. Looking right over the right shoulder of the pitcher. It really gives you an idea of how a pitcher like Hudson will use inside and outside. Two and one to Charlie Blackman. On the ground to Duffy. And a ground ball hit right at an infielder. That's key. Let's take a look at that defense that Tim Hudson will have behind him tonight. Starting in the Giants outfield from left to right, it'll be Aoki, Pagan, and Maxwell. That's your outfield. Crawford and McGee on the left side of the infield. Duffy and Posey on the right side. Andrew Susak, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Here's Dickerson. Dickerson last night went two for four. And he takes a strike. Hudson hit in the corner. Four for ten with a home run. Dickerson off of Hudson in his career. Tulowitzki on deck. And Hudson throws the 1 1 pitch to Corey Dickerson. Line drive. Aoki hit right at the left fielder. 
So far, so good. Here's here's our AT&T U-verse rewind. April 14, 2015. Hudson versus the Rockies. Seven innings pitch, eight hits, three runs, no walks, four strikeouts. He threw 100 pitches, and the Rockies won, four to one. He was carving him up that night. Yeah, Giants just couldn't score. Here's Tulowitzki. And a strike to the fellow here they call too low. 295, a home run, eight driven in. Too low, likes that high fastball. Good mistake hitter. Likes that high breaking ball. He's just a good hitter, period. But boy, he in this ballpark. He is something else. Just inside. Two balls and one strike. Yep. Detroit to Lewis. Like good hitters, I mean, you have to move the ball around. You can't go one way at him. You have to move around. You have to mix movements. You have to change speeds and avoid hanging anything. Bill Hyde above. He's unforgiven. So three and one. On deck is Justin Morneau. Hudson throws to Lewitsky three and one. And a base hit to left field. Well, what do you say? He likes that high pitch. Uh, you know, Hudson does not want to walk. You got to make guys swing the bat. You have to at least give your defense a chance. You cannot defend a walk. So here's more no. Take a look at this three one challenge. Just a bullet in the left field, but stayed in the yard. Morneau hitting 250. Two for four last night. And he bounces this one into right field, a base hit. Ball. Not a whole lot Buster Posey could do, not a whole lot that Matt Duffy could do. Big difference in the ball game last night was how the Rockies hit with runners in scoring position. They're five for 14. And that was the difference of the game. Arnado hitting at 345. Takes a strike in its own one. Two for five last night, hitting the third slot. Tonight, hitting fifth. Aggressive hitter. He will chase out the strike zone. Play Susak, one ball and one strike. One thing, if you look at the Rockies lineup, they've got pretty good power up and down the lineup. With the eight guys that are starting tonight, it's conceivable to think by the end of the year they're all going to be a double digit figures in the home run column. They have that type of distribution in it, up and down the lineup of power. They're second in the league with runners in scoring position. One and two. And look, their numbers are always going to be very good in this park. It's a hitter's park. All you got to do is look at the outfield. Look at how much green there is in the outfield. A lot of area. Big yard because they needed to move the fences back because of the way the ball carries here. And in doing so, it just created so much more outfield area to be responsible for.
One and two to Arenado. Again, blocked by Susak, two and two. You look at fair territory, and the most fair territory in the NL West is Coors Field. That's some big yards. I mean, Chase Field's a big yard, AT&T, of course. And Wrigley Field is the smallest outfield in, in the National League, and Fenway Park, the smallest so, outfield. So the two oldest parts. Two oldest ones, the two smallest outfields to cover. Didn't have a lot of acreage to build those stadiums. Got him, and that'll end the inning. Rocky st strand a pair. Susak's going to lead things off. championship ring created by Tiffany and company and it is identical to the ring given to the players and it will be personalized with your last name purchase tickets at sfgiants.com slash ring raffle it's 10 bucks that's the minimum purchase and all the proceeds benefit the Giants community fund a terrific fund run by terrific people here's Susak Susak takes outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Susak is three for eight since his recall from Sacramento. And he bounces this one foul. You really have to fight yourself if you hit from the right side off of De La Rosa to, to try and stay inside what you see from him. Try and pull that, that big hard slider. He's got it going pretty good tonight. And it's very difficult to keep it fair. Susak gets it into center field, but it's right at Blackman, who now goes back and he makes the catch. Bringing up Casey McGee. Not a bad idea to think opposite gap in any at bat at the big league level, but especially against a guy like De La Rosa, who's got such good movement at the end of his pitches. So here's Casey McGee hitting 163. Hit his home run in Arizona, the first series of the year. And he's got a couple of lifetime doubles off of De La Rosa in six at bats. This one in the left field of base hit. Will McGee go for two? 
He is going to go for two, and he is going to make it. So three hits lifetime off of De La Rosa in seven at bats, and all three hits doubles. And here's Crawford. Now he's at a point now where he thinks that I, I should start getting some hits. I mean, he's hitting the ball hard. He's starting to barrel the bat. And it's been finding gloves. Here, nobody's going to catch this one. And off the crack of the bat, they jammed him in left center and opened up the lane and on, the, on the foul line in left field. And that's where he saw an opportunity to get the second. Nice and bad. Crawford hitting at 211. And he swings at the breaking ball and misses. Yeah. Well, Joe LaFay and, and Hensley Mullins, the two hitting instructors for the Giants, applauding. Ace McGee is putting in a lot of extra work to try and get this slump past him. Everybody in that clubhouse is coming up to Casey McGee saying, look, you've been through this before, grind it out. You're a hitter. You're going to get your hits. But there comes a point in time where you don't want to hear it anymore. You want to see some hits. You, know, you don't want to be hitting into double plays. He's hitting the seven double plays, and he's really frustrated. Strike to Crawford. He's now behind in the count one and two. Get two strikes on you with De La Rosa out on the mound. You never quite know what you're going to get. And the, the thing about De La Rosa is he'll throw two of those, and you'll think he's wild. And then he'll paint you. Absolute pain. And you'll go, what? Well, what's going on? Uh, and you know his velocity. You know, he could be electric with the fastball. We've seen him go as high as 96, 97 miles per hour with it. He'll hover around 93, 95. And that's not overthrown. I mean, he's got a good arm. And he is extremely comfortable in the confines of Coors Field. Hit well into left center field. Can Blackman get there? He is going to make the running catch. And a nice play by Blackman in center field. Well, Crawford gave it a ride, just had too much height under it. And for a guy who has good range like Blackman, just too much time to be able to run underneath it. Well, he almost let it have it pop out of the glove. Snow cones on him. Oop. Nice play. So here's Hudson, who's 0 for 5 on the season. I don't think there was one instant where he didn't think he was going to catch that ball. He was kind of gliding. With a swing and a miss. Watch the ball hit and try to squirt out. To no avail. Oh, and two to Hudson. Shallow and right is Gonzalez. If Hudson were to get a hit to right, it would be hard for McGee to score. High. One and two. Let's try to blow him away with 95. And last night here at the ballpark. Pretty close to that again tonight. Hudson fouls it out of play into the upper deck. That makes it a good ballpark. John Miller, that was his criterion for a good ballpark. You have to feel wherever, whatever level you're sitting on this, in this, in, in your ballpark, that you should have the ability to get a foul ball. I mean, obviously, there are some places you're not going to be able to get it, but. 
there has to be able to get a foul ball in your upper deck for it to be a true ballpark. This one just qualified. Outside, it's two and two. So Hudson making De La Rosa work just a little bit. And in the end, he strikes out Hudson on a breaking ball. McGee's double wasted. Bottom of the second coming up. It's one nothing Giants. Game changer last night. Justin Maxwell came up with two really nice defensive plays. This one going over high backhander. Beautiful play. That was with one out in the bottom of the seventh, and then with two men on and two outs. This is the bottom of the eighth. He comes in and does a nice sliding grab. Two nice plays. That's our T-Mobile game changer. Play a little bit out there. Yeah, he's having fun. Here's Carlos Gonzalez. And then Nick Hunley and then DJ LeMayhew. And Gonzalez takes a strike. He's been in a slump. He did have two hits last night. And he started to go the other way last night. And that's what the Rockies were pleased about. Bounces this one foul. That came up and hit him in the helmet. Larry Walker. Larry Walker, as they used to announce him here at Coors Field. What a what a great career he had here as a as a Rocky. Try to elevate with the fastball. Walker's a like a four and a half tool player. Not great speed, but a really good base runner. Cannon for an arm. Two and two. So he definitely is established in. Fastball moves the feet of Gonzalez, which normally sets up movement that you'll run away on the outside corner. He's trying to buy a little room on that outside corner by moving his feet. Get out to Aoki. Can he get there? He does. All right, time now for our Geico quote. This one comes from Justin Maxwell on his catch in the seventh inning last night. He said, normally that ball would have been right at me, but since we're playing in outer space, uh, <laughs> the ball carried. And he said it with that very same smile that you see in that picture. He had a great smile. And that's our Geico quote. He should have a great smile. Mother and father, both dentists. 
By the way, you saw Larry Walker, and we saw a lot of some of the older players that used to play for the Rockies, and they are all back in town for a ceremony tomorrow, which is the 20th anniversary of the first game here. We will not be celebrating that. As I mentioned earlier, Giants are 75 and 93 in this park. That record. Larry Walker had everything to do with yeah, it. He did. On deck is DJ LeMayu. Outside and low to Hunley. It's now one and two. Hunley taps it to McGee at third. He's got it. His throw on the run to Posey, who digs it out. Two down. Nicely done. Not an easy play, but a play you got to make. Yeah, but those weird angles where you throw off your right foot, I mean, they're fun, aren't they? It's like he had to try and avoid stepping on third base. If the first baseman digs it out, they're fun. If he doesn't, <laughs> they're not fun. Short hops like that are pretty routine for big league first baseman. Here's LeMayhew, who's the hottest man on the planet right now. Give you an idea, not only is he swinging the bat well, and he is, but he also had a check swing base hit last night, a little looper over the first baseman's head. Double. Yeah. Was it a double? Yeah. The magic one do double? Uh, you know, it's usually when you start getting hits like that, though, your hot streak is getting close at the end. <laughs> but stepping into the batter's box right here, hit 414. And really, outside of that little bloop that we saw, it's been a pretty loud oh, 414. No, it's legit. There's no doubt about that. Taps this one. Crawford can't get to it. And that had a little magic wand do on The swing from last night we're talking about. Just, uh, uh, excuse me. No. I'll take my double. Thank you very much. Here's De La Rosa. De La Rosa in that outing, his last outing, he only pitched two innings. He did not get in at bat. Never hear a big league hitter apologize for an excuse me swing like that. And there's a reason. Get on the ground and a base hit. It's just never easy here. Ever. No, it just is. It's just too offensive. You never now see a big league hitter apologize for it because they know somewhere down the road they're going to go one for 33 and hit 18 balls hard at somebody. Right now. This is a big test here for for Tim Hudson. Well, you got two ground balls. That's what he wanted, right? Yeah. They found holes. That's what happens here. Blackman bounced out to Duffy to open up the bottom of the first. And he takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Well, look, you, you look at it a lot of ways. Corey Dickerson hit a bullet caught by Oki, and Gonzalez did the same thing. It's kind of the way it goes for you if you're a big leaguer. Line to left. That'll be a base hit. Aoki coming in. Here's his throw. It is not in time. Game time. Well, it was not for lack of effort from Andrew Susek. With Aoki, you know, he doesn't have a particularly strong arm, but it's a quick release and it's an accurate arm. 
Nice opposite field hitting from Blackman, who's been locked in. Let's watch the throw again from Aoki. And despite a nice swipe tag effort from Susak, LeMahieu does indeed beat the throw. So here's Dickerson. Position yourself on the left side, and as you catch the ball, you swing around the pivot of your knee. I mean, that really is a nice job by Susak. Just a little late. Side retired. Top of the order coming up. It'll be Aoki, Duffy, and Pagan. This game is tied. Giants baseball on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by this solar company. Not just any solar company, the solar company. Switch to solar and save. The ninth annual or the ninth season of the CSN All-Star Teacher Program, recognizing teachers that make a difference. You can visit CSNBayArea.com and vote. It's for the 2015 All-Star Teacher, and it's brought to you by Provident Credit Union. And the winner receives $20,000 for his or her school. Remember, you can vote at csnbayarea.com. All right, somebody's got some good attitude here at Coors Field. Well, they should. Been a lot of fun the last five years. And five years went fast. It goes fast when you win. Yeah. I remember that 1985 season was like 10 years. Yeah. You want your time in the big leagues to last a little longer? Be in a lot of losing teams. <laughs> Here's Aoki with a fly ball to the left. He's 0 for 1. And he takes a low. On the ground to short. Tulowitzki kicks it, gets rid of it. Not a problem. Not a problem. You've got an arm like two to whiskey. Totally flat footed throw, and he threw out Oki by four steps. <laughs> Ball comes up on him. Drop your glove, barehander, rifle. Not close. Here's Duffy. Duffy struck out in the first inning. Ball is high, one ball and no strikes. Well, he's got the Rocky jersey on, but I think he's got a little Giants fan in him. I don't even know why I, I say hope that. Not. 
You don't mean that. Two balls and no strikes. It's supposed to be a threat of rain here tonight. I'm just not seeing it at all. Perfect night for baseball. Foul off of the shin guard of Mr. Hirschbeck. It's two balls and one strike. Yeah, they said tomorrow is supposed to be an 80% chance of rain. Tomorrow we do our open in a rain jacket. It you in? Happen. Did you bring your rain jacket? I did. Snow up in the Rocky Mountains. Three and one to Duffy trying to get on for Pagan, who's trying to get on for Posey, and the list goes on. It's a one to one ball game here in the third. Duffy takes a rip, but this is going to slice foul. Here it is. Got him for the second time. A little slider, maybe a cutter. He just sort of tucked in on the outside part of the plate at the belt. Strikeout number three. All three of the strikeouts against David Rosa have been swing and miss strike threes. So here's Pagan. Same spot in the first inning. Pagan single. Takes a strike and it's only one. What's to Posey to follow? Cap foul. So De La Rosa quickly out in front of Angel Pagan. De La Rosa taking a lot of time. You know, he is very deliberate, as you said, at the start of the broadcast, but I do believe he's picked it up a little bit from where we saw him last year. Got it. Kulowitzki's going to lead things off. And then it'll be Morneau and Arenado. It's a 1 1 ball game.
Snap Bay Area is brought to you by Lenardi's Markets. For a location near you, visit lenardis.com or find us on Facebook. Lenardi's, quite simply the best. Well, yeah, looking for the best coverage of San Francisco Giants baseball, log on to csnbarrier.com as insider Alex Pavlovich provides wire to wire reporting of the 2015 season. Check it out. Tulowitzki takes a strike. Smile smooth. Got it. Got it. Yes. High and deep to left. It is going. Solo home run. It's 2 1, Colorado. Troy Tulowitzki's 100th career home run here at Coors Field. And it was a bomb. They set up away. It goes up and in. Tulowitzki looking up. He looking in. Looking fastball. It gets every one of those three things he's looking for. And there's the result. Home run number two on the year. Here's Morneau. And a strike to Morneau. And... Uh, in case you're wondering where it exactly it landed, that's a bomb. Morneau takes a strike. It's another than two. Just the way that Larry Walker used to hit him. On the ground to Posey. So Morneau will be retired, and that'll bring up Arenado. Arenado struck out to end the first inning. And it's 0 and 1. Well, guys may be trailing by a run, but when you're eating a snow cone with your dad, life is good. I had a good looking hat. Blind foul, and it's nothing in two. Hudson rubs up a new baseball. Yeah, wise decision there. Good Got choice. Two of them. It's all right. She got two hands. <laughs> Very happy. One and two. Hit on the ground to Crawford. Crawford has it. His throw in plenty of time. Two outs. So you give up a home run and a ball up. You get right back down around the knees. You get two ground balls. Uh, solo home runs are not going to beat you here unless obviously they hit six or seven on them. Well, you're right. I mean, and the thing that really does beat you here is, is walks. It's what you do before the home run. That's exactly right. Gonzalez lined out to Aoki in the second. And he takes a strike. That's the mindset of a, of a pitcher who's been in the big leagues for over 16 years, as Hudson has, is simply eliminate it. Look what you're facing. Identify the situation and pitch to it. I mean, you could be angry for a second, get over it, move on. I mean, you have to have that mindset. You have to commit to your pitch. You have to hold your concentration. I mean, you're, 
trading in the game, but you still have to make a good pitch to the next hitter. Because guess what he's trying to do? He's trying to beat you. So it's 0-2 to Gonzalez. On the ground to Duffy. And Duffy will throw out Gonzalez. And three ground balls after the big fly. Fourth inning coming up. 2-1 Colorado. Clark, it's a special event package, and it includes a ticket to the game, a Tim Linscombe bobblehead. Reminder to receive the Linscombe bobblehead, you need to purchase the Filipino Heritage Night special event ticket. SFGiants.com slash special events. Here's what it looks like. That was after his no-hitter at home against the Padres. That was back in the mustache days. Here's Buster Posey. De La Rosa now pitching with the lead. And Posey takes high. One ball and no strikes. Buster doubled down a left field line to knock in a run in the first. Left field not hit very well. And this is foul. One of those where if you hit it fair, he's probably got himself a base hit. So it's a ball and a strike. Buster Posey now nine for 29 against Jorge De La Rosa lifetime. So he jams him on the 1 0 pitch and goes right back out of the play at the belt away. And that was something he just could not do in his last outing. His last outing against the Padres, he went two innings, gave up nine hits, walked a, a guy, gave up nine runs. How's it back? But tonight, he really hasn't made many mistakes out over the middle of the plate. He's been able to utilize. The breaking ball is a very good weapon tonight. Haven't seen many changeups. It's been pretty much a two pitch performance. The fastball has been between 93 and 95, that hard slider. Now here's a changeup. That's a good one. Saved it for a little two strike surprise. Three, three strikeouts in a row. You know, you kind of like to do that as a pitcher, you know, save something. Don't show him 
the change up the first time through the lineup and all of a sudden you start throwing the second time through and it gets you a lot of a lot of strikes like that. How about the Dodgers and Padres tonight both Ian Kennedy and Brandon McCarthy. Each allowed three runs in the first inning. I, I don't know who to root for in that game. Got foul. 25 innings. And then I don't care. Exactly. We want a 25 inning ball game. Inside to Maxwell, who bounced out to third in the first inning. On deck is Andrew Susak. Three infielders on the left side of the infield. It just looks so strange. Driven to right. Gonzalez coming in, and he's going to make the catch. Another loud at bat for Justin Maxwell. The ball right on the button. And Gonzalez do a little dive. Fun to show off. Here's Susak who had a fly ball to center field. He could have caught that like four different ways. Absolutely. That was. Not sure what that set up. Zusak trying to get on. Casey McGee. The slider again. It's been a go to pitch. He's used a lot behind the count. Sack down the left field line hit well it is out of here and this game is tied wow. first of the year for Sack and here's McGee. Well, you talk about a strong man home run. I mean, that ball didn't get up at all. I didn't know it was going to have enough height to be able to get to the wall. This is just a screaming line drive, and really not a not a hanger either. I mean, it's down and it's in. That is a strong-handed man right there. Here's McGee, and McGee takes a strike. Talk about the carry that was in this ballpark earlier. There was wind blowing out, but the flags are still now. He taps it foul. I think the carry on that line drive came out of the wrists of Andrew Susak. Look how low that thing is. Look out. Look out. Almost picked off the Cupid doll there. One and two to McGee. McGee doubled over Arenado in the second inning. Down low. That's the same changeup. He struck out Buster Posey. So again, saving it for a little two strike surprise. And he hasn't thrown that thing other than in a two strike count. Two and two to Casey McGee with Crawford to follow. And a full count. I'm wondering how long or what kind of rope De La Rosa has tonight. Well, I think he's got 85 to 100 in him. I mean, he came out the disabled list in his last outing. He only went two innings. It was stressful. But you may be right. Maybe around 80. I mean, he's had a lot of throws tonight. That uh, he 
you're coming off of a DL. I, mean, I guess you're a little sensitive to it if you're the pitching coach. No, plus but he looks strong to me. The uh, injuries in this park and in this elevation are weird. Got him. Five or make that six strikeouts for De La Rosa. Here's the swing by Susak. And that tied the game up. Is brought to you by Casino Matrix, Silicon Valley's premier 24 7 entertainment destination. A 2 2 ball game as we head to the home half of the fourth inning. Hudson a lot of home. Oh, that's a problem. I think he's over his head. Yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. I got to make him salesman of the year. Maybe it's the fries. Fries will do that. I'm telling you. Yeah. Work with me. That's a difference maker. Anyway, too low a home run to give the Rockies the lead. Susak a home run to tie it up. And here's Hunley who swings and misses. Hunley bounced out to McGee in the second. And about to throw pitch number 48. And it's hit to Crawford. And Crawford makes the play. So four straight ground balls. And that'll bring up LeMay here. That's the fifth consecutive inning that Tim Hudson's been able to hit that first out of the inning. Yeah, it's the fries. We left the ballpark last night. This is a Friday night here in Denver, right? I, I'm to say that it was a happy group at the ballpark would be the understatement of the year. It was like Times nobody Square. was at home last night no, in Denver. The entire state of Colorado was on Blake Street, and they were having fun. The rooftop, and our bars. And Great place to hang, especially on the weekend. And that's what people in Colorado like to do. They're they're in the Mile High City. They go to a game and they like to even get a view much higher than everybody else. Uh, if you're at the rooftop, I mean, you literally are a mile above sea level. Well, man, who takes a strike? Mayhew bounced the single up the middle in the second. Close. Three and one. Change up just missed. What 
thing that's really hard to do with a guy's really hot is to get him off his back leg. It's it's hard to fool him with a mixture of speeds. Ian Hudson goes after him. Well, he knows the rules here. No walks. Make him swing it. Payoff pitch. Get to right. Maxwell gliding over. Maxwell makes the catch. Look easy. Here's De La Rosa. De La Rosa bounced a single through the right side in the second inning. It allowed Blackman to come up to knock in a run. Duffy's got it, and that'll end the inning. So a one, two, three inning. For Jim Hudson, there's the play by Duffy. That'll end the inning. Nice. You can go to sfgiants.com slash mini pack to check out the four game pack options. Each pack includes a ticket to a Dodger oh, game. Yes. Pack start as low as 79 Mugueros. And for more information on these new four pack offers, visit sfgiants.com slash mini pack. Sometimes you need an audience when you read those promos. Well, thank you for your support. Here it's two to two, and Brandon Crawford's going to lead things off. It's my first birthday, and there's no nowhere that I'd rather be. Happy birthday. I'm going to eat the sign on my birthday. <laughs> Crawford takes a hanging breaking ball, one ball and no strike. And as that pitch was coming into Crawford, Tulowitzki snuck over on the uh, second base side of uh, second base. And they put a shift on Crawford. So that evens the count. There you see the shift. I mean, that's that's late to be putting a shift on. Does that distract you if you're in the box? Uh, it, yeah, it can. So 
now Crawford's got a swing. It's one and two. So you think he did it on purpose? No, I don't. You're not going to put me into that trap. Remember, they're still mad at you here, not me. <laughs> Yeah, that cart that used to pick me up at the parking lot, I haven't seen it for No tires on it. Crawford on the ground, that's a foul ball. So Crawford in a battle right now. That's if, if you can do it. I mean, if you can do it, and and not all pitchers can, you can have one of those nights where you have a lot of strikeouts. But if you can actually keep the opposition from putting the ball in play here, <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, yeah. You I and mean, that's a great formula in any park, but in this park, And this is not an easy place to get strikeouts because you definitely lose movement in this ballpark. Sliders are not as quick. Sinkers doesn't have as big a sink. Hudson Skies went out into right center field for Blackman. And that'll be out number two. And here's Noria out. Two two ball game. Fifth inning. Aoki's 0 for 2. And Bruce Bochi. Fly ball to left and a ground ball to short. Takes inside one ball and no strikes. Now he's average now at 303. And here he rolls it foul. One ball and one strike. Tomorrow it'll be Tim Lincecum. Go back to the ballpark that he had his first big league win in. I'm looking at the the uh, starting pitching matchups in LA. And I really don't like to get ahead of ourselves. In this case, I think we should mention it. The we were promoting the Bumgarner Kershaw matchup again, right? Yeah. yeah it's not going to happen. Really? Bumgarner against Anderson on Monday. Vogelsong against Kershaw on Tuesday, and then Heston Brinke. One pitch here it is. Now that doesn't mean we're not going to actually not go to LA, but it does make that rotation a little bit different. Well, I, I just expect every time the Dodgers Giants get together, we're going to see Ricky and Kershaw. Period. And then cast the thousands. Foul down the left field line. You would think the way that Aoki uses his lower body in his advantage against left handers that he would not have great plate coverage on the outside corner. But he does. He rakes lefties. As he starts his swing, I mean, he starts to open up that hip. And he gets his plate coverage, but he still gets out of the box beautifully. But if you look at it, you almost look think that he's pulling off every pitch. 
and you'll see a lot of the Japanese hitters hit with the style. And an easy take on the 3 2 pitch, and that's the first block. De La Rosa is issued, and here's Duffy who's trying to figure De La Rosa out. No, you're right. I mean, he struck out twice swinging. And when you have two strikeouts against a guy, I mean, he tends to weigh heavy on your mind. You know, he's thinking, he's got a plan here as to what he's going to try and do. I think he's going to try and get after him early in the count to stay out of the two strike. Yeah, you're right. And a bit high to Duffy, and now Hundley's going to go out and see if he can settle De La Rosa down. Well, I think Hundley gave the, the, the side to throw to first base. Ah. And he came to him with a fastball. Which, if you're the catcher and you see the pitcher going to throw you a pitch and you really don't know what's coming, not a good feeling, especially with the guy on. Well, there's the throw of the first. It, it's amazing, even at the big league level, how signs are missed. You would think that it never happens. Well, it does. It does. Strike to Duffy. A little quick pitch right there. It was. In the dirt. Nice play by Hunley. We have really seen some good ball blocking by catchers in the National League West this year. You can add Nick Hunley to the list. Well, Gozowicz was unbelievable. Tuffy Gozowicz with the call or the uh, Diamondbacks just put on a, a show in the two series that Giants had with him. So. Just a wee bit low. Dale Rosa actually walked off the mound thinking he, he should have gotten that one. See if Aoki thinks about going here three and one. And the walk in Pagan's going to hit. So a rally for three here in the fifth. Two, number two, one of two hitters to, to, to get to your third spot in the lineup. And that'll definitely cause a pitching coach to get a little nervous. Christian Bergman is in the bullpen, the right hand. So, well, why is the skipper of the Rockies? I don't think he appreciates the two out, two walks. 87 pitches for De La Rosa. And a strike to Pagan. So he gets right back in the strike zone with a 94 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, I think Pagan was taken all the way. That's not a bad idea. I don't think he learned when he was hitting the leadoff spot. He's not afraid of a two strike count. So he will make a pitcher throw a strike. I hope he goes and he's going to steal it. And that's his fifth of the year. As soon as De La Rosa turned and looked in, he was gone. So De La Rosa, not varying his looks, got a little predictable, and Aoki took advantage of it. So I mean, your position now were a pass ball or a wild pitch. And yeah, he's also in a spot where you have to make it. On the ground to Tulowitzki. And Tulowitzki is going to throw out. 
Pagan, and that'll end the inning. So the walks do not hurt De La Rosa, and now Hudson with a challenge. The top of the order is coming up. is brought to you by Amici's East Coast Pizzeria. When you want the best pizza in town, Amici's delivers. Good ball game tonight here at Coors Field is Hudson. It's a 2-2 game. Hudson will face Blackman, Dickerson, and Tulowitzki. Blackman is one for two. And he takes a strike. A bit low, perhaps. Jazz playing straight away in the outfield. You see the streak that Blackman has been on. I mean, he's got doubles, triples, home runs, and yet you still have to respect the fact that he might drop down a bunch. So Casey McGee has to play with a bag at third base. Two and one, not a Blackman. Dickerson on deck. There's a shot up the middle for a base hit. And here's Dickerson. Dial, a lot of what he's doing right now is going right back up the middle. Just, I don't know, I can't remember the guy taking a bat at bat, to be honest with you. And I think the thing about Blackwood that is so consistent is his balance. Dickerson is lined out and he's bounced out to Crawford. Strike in its own one. Dulowitzki to follow. A 2 2 ball game. Four hits for the Giants, seven for Colorado. Each team has hit a home run. Hudson needs a double play ball right here. Black getting a healthy lead at first base. And 
that's down low. One thing about this Rocky team, they don't try to steal too many bases, especially here at Coors Field. I mean, they've only tried 13 attempts on the year as a team, and they've been thrown out seven times. Blackman is 0 for 2 in that regard. Quick toss, Blackman back. Outfield straight away. Maxwell off the line and right. And deep, as you would expect here in this ballpark. And with the consistency of Hudson to put the ball on the ground. Bruce Bochy is anticipating that Walt Weiss might start Blackman at first base. And he might. It's one ball and one strike. One and two. Another healthy swing from Corey Dickerson. We were talking about it last night's ball game, how hard this guy swings. I mean, he he lets it, he lets out some shaft. This is a 1 1 swing. And he almost knocks himself down with the effort. Nice off speed pitch. Got to go for it. Throw it again. Let's allow Hudson to do some things. It's 1 and 2. Stays at one and two. So, young catcher coming out to the old pitcher. Has an idea, wants to talk it over with him. Run it by him. I think that old pitchers do. They, they trust a suggestion from a catcher because perhaps a catcher gets a sense that a guy's moving around the box, looking one side of the plate. Younger pitchers and the guys that are stubborn, the old guys, no, no, they'll go with it. Nice block, Susak, two and two. That may have been the message. Let's go down the dirt one time. You throw it, I'll block it. So it's two and two to Dickerson. To Lewitsky waiting patiently in the on deck circle. Blackman with his lead and tossed to first and Blackman is back. He's got two steals on the year. Posey holding on Blackman. 65 pitches for Hudson. Pull foul. 66 pitches, 46 strikes. One thing he has really effectively done tonight is, is really caress the strike zone from all corners. Been able to do it with all his pitches. That'll make that man happy. Now you can 
see what Hudson's doing. And this is the toughest part of the lineup. And he's just really taking his time. Well, he's got a pitch here to go out of strike zone. And, uh, you know, Dickerson, like a lot of these Rockies, I mean, they, they get aggressive and they'll chase. Out of play. So he would back foot breaking ball and he follows back up and he paints the outside corner to bees with 88 mile an hour sink. So inside, outside, outside, inside. He's really moving the ball around and shaving corners. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat. So a good battle, as you would expect. A lot going on right now for Hudson. Trying to mess with the rhythm of the hitter, trying to mess with the rhythm of the runner at first base. And all the while, Troy Tulowitzki lurking in the on deck circle. This one off his foot. Inside, outside, outside, inside. Dickens is trying to walk this one off. Well, it took his breath away. Siri got him. Fastball in. Hit himself high on the left thigh. I don't think I've seen that. Not in a long time. And that's an area you do not expect to hit yourself with. Two and two. Hit on the ground to Duffy, to Crawford, to Posey. And in the end, Hudson wins the battle. It's a big league pitching right there. That is some big league pitching. And that turned out to be a rough at bat for Dickerson. Yeah, he's not actually shaking this off very quickly. Uh, he's hurt. It's almost like he gets hit by a pitch in the middle of an at bat and has to continue on. Here's Tulowitzki. Lewitsky is single and he's homered. And this is where you really want to face two Lewitsky. Two outs and nobody on. Swings and misses all in one. Activity, lots of it. Is that a hanging slider? It was to start the event. Brooks Brown, the, the one gentleman. And it looked like uh, Scott Oberg. You see two right handers getting ready to go. Well, I'd have to believe that Jorge De La Rosa's evening is. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. The way they're getting after it. One and one to Tulowitzki. One and two to Tulowitzki. He's not looking for that pitch. And Tulowitzki, we found out a while back, I mean, he will guess with two strikes. Way outside. Two balls, two strikes. Two four and zero for the Giants. Two seven and zero for the Rockies. Lewinsky steps out. Check swing roller to Crawford. 
Crawford will take his time and that'll end the inning. A very nice inning for Hudson considering how it started out. Bosey's going to lead things off. Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffINS.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. It's a 2-2 ball game as we head to inning number six here at Coors Field. When it's time for a change, thanks to the oil change and auto service, your oil change tune-up and brake experts. Scott Oberg is now on the mound. Let's see what he's done. Just got called back up Wednesday when they expanded this pitching staff to 13 pitchers. 1 0, ERA at 9. We saw him in San Francisco. He's got a good arm. It's mid 90s fastball and a hard curveball and a changeup combination. Here's Buster Posey. And he opens him up with a curveball. Oberg went to Yukon. Maxwell to follow. Two balls and no strikes. Buster tonight knocked in a run with a double in the first, struck out in the fourth. Out of play. Two balls and one strike. Oberg snuck that one up there at 95. Yeah, put you to sleep with a couple of slow curveballs yeah. in heat 0 2 on you at 95. The sneak attack and Posey late. Hard to throw a fastball by Posey. Up the middle and a base hit for Buster Posey. Two hits tonight. Well, two good. Outings tonight so far from the starters Jorge De La Rosa who's out of this ball game. He and Hudson both with five hits or five innings, four hits for Taylor Rosa, seven for Hudson, seven strikeouts for De La Rosa, one for Hudson. And look at the pitches. The strikeouts will get more pitches out of you. Ninety through five for De La Rosa, seventy-four through five for Hudson. Both Maxwell games. is 0 for two. He did hit the ball hard. There's Hudson in the fourth inning. Purple. Susak is on deck.
Tardy, nothing in two. We got to get her geared up a little quicker. She's wearing that championship Giants cap perfectly. Oh, yeah, she's got her colors on. Got a game face on, too. Outside to Maxwell. Turned out to be a dry evening. Let's see what happens tomorrow. No swing. Two and two. Bill Wilkie, the first base up part tonight, saying no swing. Did you tell me warm in LA? It's going to be in the 80s when we get to Los Angeles. Giants go after tomorrow. Tomorrow's ball game. Get in at night. Get a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday series, and the Giants come home with an off day at home. How about that? Get a nice long home stand. Maxwell hits one well to right. Gonzalez spins around, looking up. It is not a home run. So you better start running, Maxwell. And Maxwell will no. Maxwell needs to get back, and they're going to tag him out. Unbelievable. The first base umpire, Bill Welke, signaled no home run, and Maxwell didn't know it. Well, they're going to look at it, or at least talk about it. I mean, scoring is Buster Posey. If it goes over that yellow line, that's a home run. Yep. Hits the back wall. That's a home run. So they're going to take a look at it. No doubt about it. I mean, the yellow line is, is problematic. Whenever there's a short fence behind it. I hit the back. That's that's a home run. But you can see why it would be difficult to see for Welke, who's running out there to try and get a sure. good look at it. This replay review is presented by Xfinity. That's a quick one. Well, we thought it was going to be a quick one. Hello? Anybody there? I've already written in home run. Oh, I, seriously. Hello? <laughs> they, are, they are totally messing with us. <laughs> and, you know, I think they're talking to each other. Somebody may be getting the, the rules to make sure that they get the call right before they make the call. But once it goes over that yellow line here at Coors Field, it's gone. It is out of here. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> but you know what? I, I have to believe he's a little disappointed. You had a, an umpire who was like tackling you when you were trying to complete your trot. Well, it's a two run home run, and for Maxwell, his third of the year, and the Giants lead four to two. That's two strikes, swing of the bat, too. So here's Susak. And Susak takes a strike. Well, he did gear it up a little bit. Well, he's locked in. He is. Locked in. And he knows it. And that'll make you smile.
Welcome to San Francisco, Mr. Maxwell. I think you're going to like it here. Yeah, and if this keeps up, you won't be paying for dinner. No. No, you won't. Susak also homered this ball game, so a shot back in the fourth. And he lines one down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Gonzalez will dig it out, and Susak is going to stop at second with a double. Another nice two strike at that. Another nice opposite field two strike at bat. Well, right now, the two happiest guys outside of Susak and Maxwell in this ballpark have to be Bam Bam Mullins and Joe LaFay, the Giants hitting instructors. Three straight hits, a single home run, and now a double. That's the pitching coach, Steve Foster. Christian Friedrich is in the bullpen. Giants do have a lefty Crawford coming up, and then the pitcher Hudson followed by Aoki. Outside corner. It's amazing how home runs will uplift the mood of a dugout. It's just. Yep. Puts a smile on everybody's face. Susak at second. Nobody out. Two runs in. Swinging a shot to right, and it's caught by LeMahieu. Yeah, just keep having a pass like that. Sooner or later, it'll fall. Casey McGee getting tested. But a good at bat. Another opposite field at bat. Inside out. And for LeMahieu, 6'4". He used every bit of that reach. Here's Walt Weiss sprinting out. And it's going to be Christian Friedrich coming in. Giants have scored twice. Oberg departs. And we'll be back. Sprinting out. Sprinting out. Sixty-two, big year for the Giants. Giants beat the Pirates at Forbes Field by a final of eight to three. And in that game, Gaylord Perry recorded his first career win. Five hit, five innings pitched, seven hits, a couple of earned runs, and uh, Gaylord finished his twenty-two year career with three hundred and fourteen wins, and he is in the Hall of Fame in a Giants uniform. Very, very smart, intelligent pitcher. 
And I mean, he he was creative. He, not a whole lot that he couldn't do with the baseball. But a great reader of hitters, and just a great competitor. So here's Crawford to face Friedrich. See his numbers. He pitched two thirds of an inning yesterday through eight pitches. Half game and he's come in. He's 12 base runners at nine and two thirds, seven strikeouts against the wall. Four pitch guy. You see low to mid 90s with the fastball. And Crawford drills one into left center field. Can Dickerson get there? He makes a sliding catch. And Crawford twice now is hit the ball into the gap. Only to have it run down. Well, again, just a little bit too much height. Ball hit well. And you can see the route of Dickerson, who runs well. Think about Dickerson. I mean, he doesn't have much of an arm, but he can cover some ground. So here's Hudson. Hudson is struck out, and he's flied out. No strikes. Not, uh, one ball and one strike. That's what like nothing better here than to help his own cause. Maxwell's home run has given the Giants the lead. Balls in a strike. All right, three and one. Well, he's going to get a pitch to hit, or at least he should. He's not going to pitch around the pitcher with an open base. So this should be right down the, the throat. And if Hudson were to hit a ball to left field, they might try and score Susak, who is at average speed at best, because of the weakness of the arm of Dickerson and left. Well, it's going to be Aoki who's going to hit. Well, this is where you can create some space right here, which is what you need in this park. Yeah, you never quit adding on in this ballpark. You never think you have enough. Aoki is 0 for 2 with a walk. And the first pitch is high. High with a slider. It's 1 and 0. Yeah, he's just trying to find something to get in the strike zone. He can't trust the fastball. And a lot of guys feel they have more command of a slider than a fastball. It is a bit. Easier to throw for a strike. And they're going to say Noria Oki went around. One ball and one strike. Oki did not agree with that. If Aoki gets in a massive argument with an umpire, can the interpreter come out? Yeah, he's on the bench. Squirts away. Susak and Hudson move up. And now a base hit really hurts you. And now you have to, don't have to worry about Susak scoring on a base hit. Really not good glove position there for Nick Huntley. I mean, he doesn't normally make mistakes, especially breaking a block and a breaking ball. But he went out there and tried to shortstop that ball with the positioning of his glove. And that's not what you want to do. Three and one. And nobody else in that rocky pit bullpen right now. This is Friedrich's inning.
See if I could get something to hit here. Not even close. Oh, he's squeezing it right now. Here comes Foster one more time. Uh, you have a guy there's really struggling with command. I mean, you get back to the basics as a pitching coach. Look at a catcher, and you'll ask him first off, "What can he get over the plate?" And you ask the pitcher, "What do you think you can get over the plate?" And then, based on what you hear there, you go back and say, "Keep your eyes on your target. Try and throw the ball through the target. The whole time you throw that ball, never let your eyes leave the target." And that is like one of the most fundamental things that you could tell anybody in regards to throwing and trying to throw accurately. But this is panic time. If, if you are Steve Foster, the pitching coach for the Rockies, and this first pitch here is where you could bushwhack. But you got to make sure it's a strike. Because this guy is struggling right now. And it's all in one. Someone drops a 90 mile hour fastball at the knees on the outside corner. You know, and he may have been looking fastball, but he wasn't looking middle away. Duffy, foul. Just barely. How foul was it? Yeah, about three feet. He gets a lot of hits down that line. One or two. Now that's how you're supposed to block breaking ball. The glove really. Be it just blocks the hole between your legs. All you're trying to do is catch that ball with your chest protector. And this is textbook perfect. Great position with the glove. Not trying to shortstop the ball with your glove. Duffy up the middle. LeMayhew. Got him. Maxwell going the opposite way to give the Giants the lead. And it's four to two. And May 7th through the 10th, come see Giancarlo Stanton. 
Saturday, May 9th is a special 605 star. The first 40,000 will receive a Hunter Pence fence catch bobblehead courtesy of PG&E. And Mother's Day on Sunday, May 10th, the first 20,000 fans receive an Infinity World Champion scarf courtesy of Dryer's Ice Cream. Get your tickets at sfgiants.com slash tickets. Hunter Pence likes his bobblehead. Hunter Pence likes just about everything. Except the disabled list. Yeah, he's not big on that. You're right. Morneau's going to lead things off. Giants lead 4 2. Morneau is 1 for 2. And here he bounces this one to Posey. Picks it himself. One out. Boy, one pitch out. That's a great way to start it in. And that, that is the actual positioning of the actual catch on your left of Hunter Pitts. And they did a pretty good job on that bobblehead to recreate that. I, I like that. That was one of the best catches we've ever seen in right field at at and Arenado is struck out and he's bounced out. Next pitch is down low. Hudson with 76 pitches. Two and zero with Gonzalez on deck. Looking for a good 2 0 pitch right here. And he fouls it out of play. This was the, the catch that Pence made. And he had to make a late adjustment. Catches it, slams into the chain link fence, hangs on. And Ryan Vogelsong loving it. Gregor Blanco coming over. The roar in that ballpark was deafening. Two and two. What a time that was. Kind of makes you want to do it again, doesn't it? Yeah, like right now. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to earn that feeling. Yeah, right. Two balls, two strikes. To the hot part of the yard, but Maxwell says I got it, and he does. Two out. You just do not trust right center with any fly ball. Here's Gonzalez, who's 0 for 3, or make that 0 for 2. For a ball, one ball and no strikes. Struck well, it had the right sound, and this one is gone. It's a four to three game. He started to see it last night when he was covering pitches on the outside part of the plate, going the opposite way with it. He had been in a slump, batting average under 200, but you could see that he was starting to keep his front shoulder in. 
They go out of way. This is a little bit too much plate, but what a beautiful swing. And he knows it as soon as it leaves the bat. Second homer of the year for Gonzalez. So here's Hundley. And he takes outside for a ball. Hundley's bounced out twice once to third, once to short. Flips this one out to right as Maxwell comes in, and that'll end the inning. Gonzalez second home run of the year. It's a 4-3 lead for the Giants. By your local Toyota dealer. Hudson's been good. De La Rosa left after 90 pitches. Maxwell's got another home run, and Tulowitzki hit a solo shot, his second of the year, and also Gonzalez hit his second of the year. When it's time for a change, think Speedy, oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and brake experts. Christian Bergman, the new pitcher for Colorado. He's a swing man. Fourth time he's come into a ball game. He's had a start. And for Bergman, you're going to see a low 90s fastball. He will cut. He will sink. He'll give you a curveball, slider, change up. He's a guy who's normally got great command of his stuff. Product out of the Rockies minor league organization. Just a little shy of a year's time at the big league level. Not a big guy, 6'1, 180. So here's Pagan, and Pagan takes a pitch high. It's the three, four, and five hitters for the Giants here in the seventh. It is add on time. Inside to Pagan, it's two and oh. The opportunity in the sixth with the bases loaded, and they could not come up with the big hit. Pagan takes a strike. Pagan riffles one down the left field line. And that's going to be extra bases. And he's going to be standing at second with a leadoff double. And for the Giants, that's their ninth hit. Well, we've seen a lot of really nice opposite field approach by the entire Giants lineup tonight. They have consistently used the opposite field. And here's another one to open up the inning with a double. Not a lot of stride. Just drop the foot, raise and drop. Head stays very still. So here's 
Buster Posey. And a strike. For Buster who's got two hits tonight. I believe I said nine hits. That's their eighth hit tonight. Buster fouled down the right field line. Eight hits, but five extra base hits for the Giants. Stubbs is now in center field. Blackman moves to left. A lot of play. There's Blackman in left. Dickerson out of the game. So Stubbs will hit the ninth spot of the Rockies lineup and the pitcher spot will be the number two spot in the lineup. Outside to Buster Posey. Maxwell to follow and then Susak. Walt Weiss tonight only has four extra guys on the bench. He used one up with Stubbs coming into the ball game as they have a 13 man pitching staff. Beefed up their bullpen for this series. Buster digs that one out and fouls it out of play. Skies won the center field. Pagan should be able to tag on this one. He does. A productive out for Buster Posey as Maxwell comes up. <laughs> Maxwell hit a home run in his last at bat. Yeah, with two strikes on him, he goes the opposite way. And just line drive there right over the, the big high wall in right field. And he got to celebrate the day out. Infield in. Swing and a miss by Maxwell as they pull the string out. Yeah, good change up there. Pure strikeout situation for Burton. And he is, I mentioned he's got four pitches that he has control of. He'll throw many times. Back it up, change up, change up. Down low. Three One and two. Change up, change up, change up. Now for a high fastball above the hands is ever set up. It is set up now. This is going to be over by the Rockies dugout. And it's on the dugout and out of play. A nice play by a Giants fan. How can you tell it's a Giants fan? I just had a feeling. So Maxwell in a battle right now. Strike. That's what he needed. Think about Hirschbeck. John Hirschbeck, I mean, he's had a really consistent zone tonight. He's done a good job. And they do get the strike out there pitching for him. But Hirschbeck has a, a very short fuse. You do not argue with John Hirschbeck. Well, Chris Bochy got thrown out of the game last night. Susak shortens up to Bun and he takes a strike.
Kind of sneak attack by the kid from Sacramento. Hit into center field. Stubbs, however, has got a beat on it. And that'll end the inning. So the Giants late waste the leadoff double and we'll head to the bottom of the seventh. of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates LLC. Well, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years and you can watch every out-of-market game live or on demand at True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more every night on Every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Go to MLB.tv for details. It'll be LeMahieu and then Stubbs and then Blackman. And the first pitch strike. Congratulations, by the way, to the Warriors as they sweep the Pelican. Nice. Bring it on home, fellas. Amen. Happy flight. Mayhew takes outside. Guys, we have some activity in their bullpen. Jeremy Affelt. Heat it up. One and two not to LeMahieu. Singled in the second. Fly ball to center or right field. Well, the Giants here, they, they have not been able to get that. Base hit with runners in scoring position. They're 0 for 7 tonight. 3 for 18 in the series. Good one two slider right there. Good teaser. Until a hot hitter, he lets those go by. And LeMahieu has been that hot hitter. Up the middle, Hudson knocks it down. He will underhand it to Posey. That was headed to center field. It was. So here's Stubbs. Stubbs batting for the first time. 0 for 17 with 10 strikeouts. Now that has been the one thing that has been his. Achilles heels since he's come to the big leagues is he will swing at this. Oh, and two. Down below the strike. 
strike zone. Nice little tight slider. The slider has been very deceptive tonight for Hudson. Yeah, I think that looks a good idea. <laughs> Too much head, not enough hat. Anytime you can entertain mom, you got to do it. Yeah, that's a good horse right there. Pitch see it. Second strikeout. That's it. Second strikeout. So here's Blackman. That is a cute little girl right there. Yep, foot at the yard. Look at family right there. Have it fun. Blackman's two for three, a couple of singles. Here he takes down low. Hit foul down the left field line and out of play. Crawford out in the shallow left field and Crawford will make the catch in a nice inning for Hudson. We will head to the eighth. McGee Crawford and then we'll see. Giants post game live. You get highlights, reactions to this game, and you get analysis, and it's all coming up right after the game. So Bergman is going to face Casey McGee. Giants with a four to three lead, and this is a shot, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. So on one pitch, Bergman is going to have to go after Crawford. He's had one strikeout. McGee has. Other than that, he's hit the ball hard every time up. Yeah, he's definitely coming out of it. And you can start to see even the outs that he's had the last couple of days have been barreled. He's been hitting the ball hard. And even though they've been finding gloves, and as hard as it has been for him to remain patient, you can see he's coming out. So Belt is now on deck. Hudson's night is over, and it was a great night. In this park, my goodness, here's Crawford. Crawford takes a strike. You're right. I mean, he just had a, a lifetime ERA of over seven. And for a guy who's as good a pitcher as Hudson, 
I mean, Ed, that's that's weird. It is. And tonight, he pitched beautifully. Crawford takes down low. There's the line. He hits no walks. I cannot stress how important it is to come into this ballpark and not walk anybody. Crawford trying to pick up his first hit of the game. He's hit the ball hard twice in this game, and now it's one and two. So for Hudson after his performance tonight, you know what he wins? An all expense paid vacation to Los Angeles, he California. Does. Absolutely. Giants open up their homestand. Next Friday night, they'll be pitching it. Crawford right back to Bergman. He flips it to Tulowitzki, and that's a double play. <laughs> Belt being called back. Is it going to be Gregor Blanco? It is. Nope. Hector Sam. No, you're right, Gregor Blanco. <laughs> By the way, if Bergman hadn't Caught that ball, it would have been right at two woods. Yeah, they really had to shift on it. He was a, right behind second base. Double play either way. Blanco started and went two for five last night. I'm not sure if Gregor Blanco ever hit in a game where they put the, the shift on. He's got that little slap he tried, that little slap but he tried last night. But Nolan Arenado made a great play and denied him a base hit. You know he's thinking about it, seeing that big hole, and he's never seen it before until last night. This is the eighth. Soft line drive on one hop to LeMahieu, and that'll end the inning. It'll be Dickerson. No, check that. It'll be a pinch hitter to Lewitsky, and then more no.
Rockies close out this series here in Denver. Free game live will start at 12:30, and then first pitch will be right at the top of the hour, and uh, that will conclude the Giants and the Rockies for a while. And remember, this is the home of your World Champion Giants, and this is Comcast Sportsnet. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune-up and brake experts. Take a look at the numbers for Sergio Romo. Oh, and one with the 284 ERA, 10 strikeouts in six and a third. Ninth game that he's coming to. Here's Rafael Inoa, and Romo starts him off with a strike. Good speed. Puts the ball in play. And that makes you dangerous here. Yeah, he's done a nice job since coming over to the Rockies in this type of a role. Pitch hitting. Switch hitters, tough guy to strike out, puts the ball play. And he bounces this one foul. I may be little, but I'm a Giants fan. Tom's having the time of her life, Tom. Yeah. This is really a great ballpark to bring the family to. Strikes tonight from John Erspeck, and he's getting an earload from the Rockies bench. And this is one of the few bell highs that we have seen called strike three. And he know it. Is it starting to rain? Perhaps some time. It is. A little misty rain. Nothing serious yet. Tulowitzki's two for three. Always looks a little bit more serious on TV. Down low to Tulowitzki. His numbers against Romo, three for eight lifetime. He does have a home run. You don't want to get this in the palm of your hand. I got it. Had it played perfectly. So, I don't know if that ball gets by him if they catch him or not. In this park, probably. Here's Morneau. And Morneau takes low and away. One ball and no strikes. Morneau with one hit and three at bats. He's bounced out twice to Buster Posey. And there's a strike to even the count. Just tuck it in outside corner. It's really a great look to see the movement that Lobo has, and the command that he has. Right over the top, and you can really see what type of movement he puts on the fastball. And the break on the slider. Romo comes in with a fastball. It's two and one. Out of play, two and two. And there's the change up. Identical arm action to that of the fastball. It was designed to just get a guy off his back leg and reach. It's he's a perfect example of how you add a pitch and it makes you better. And that changeup has done that for Romo. Well, he was a two pitch guy when he got to the big leagues, and now he's a four pitch guy. A base 
sit up the middle. And that'll bring up Arenado. Lots of activity in both bullpens. Jeremy Affield up a second time for the Giants. And they've got John Axford. A right hander and Adam Ottavino, a right hander, getting loose in the Rockies bullpen. Arenado tonight is 0 for 3. He's 1 for 6 in his career against Romo. Crawford's going to go out and make the running catch just like a wide receiver and that's going to end the inning ninth inning coming up. to the ninth. All right, time now for our play of the game. It's brought to you by Honda. We think Tim Hudson is worthy of that distinction tonight. Seven great innings. Eight hits allowed, no walks, couple strikeouts. And he stands to be the pitcher of record if the Giants can bring this one home. And uh, for Hudson, a ballpark that has plagued him his whole career, came into this game with an ERA of over seven, but he pitched beautifully tonight. He is our player of the game, brought to you by Honda. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and brake experts. So the veteran, John Axford, coming into this one, five year veteran, the fourth time that he's come in. Axford, normally the closer, but the closing responsibility is being shared for the most part now with me and Adam Ottavino. And uh, Axford throws hard. You're going to see a mid to high 90s fastball, big curveball, he'll throw an occasional slider. High three quarter release, so the break of his curveball is 12 6. Nori 
Aoki takes a call strike. He's flied out, bounced out, and he's walked twice. And there's a breaking ball, and that evens the count. Duffy to follow, and then Pagan, ninth inning. Two balls and one strike. It's going to look at just how straight down that curveball is. It's not a real easy curveball to be able to throw for a strike, but it it is a great curveball to strike people out because they swing at it and it's out of the strike zone. Three and one. And the walk. Third walk in a row for Aoki. We're at Coors Field in Denver for the Giants and the Rockies. I'm Dwayne Kuyper along with Mike Kruko. We're in the ninth inning, and the Giants are hanging on to a four to three lead, and they're looking to add on here in the ninth. Duffy is 0 for three. For one reason, to see if Duffy's going to show bunt. It is a bunt situation. But Duffy not tipping his hand. By the way, Axford and Oki were teammates in Milwaukee in 2012 and 2013. Duffy taking a strike. Six five from Simcoe, Ontario, Canada. If you remember the story out of Arizona about the ball player's young son that was bitten by a rattlesnake, it was Axford's son, two year old, and uh, he's doing fine. I mean, he's had a number of surgeries, bit by a, a baby rattler about three times, but he survived it. He left the team at one point for a number of days to be with his family and his young son, but he has come back. And that is a frightening story. Gets that breaking ball in. It's one and two. That's a good one. He could not get it into his old teammate Aoki. One two to Duffy. Get on the ground to third. Renato goes to Lemayhew. Not in time. Duffy can scoot pretty good. Bringing Pagan to the plate. Mm -hmm. 
Pagan's got a couple of hits tonight. So activity now. Now filled up a third time. Casilla also getting loose. The Rockies are due to lead off the left hander, Carlos Gonzalez, who has a home run in this game. A left handed swinger, so you might sweet see FL start to the bottom of the ninth. Yep. Low to Pagan. Pagan's faced Axford two times. He's 0 for 2. Both times he struck out. Giants could add on to the score right now. I doubt you would see it. If it stays a one run game, you will see it. Pirates beat the D backs tonight, two to one. And they got a Coors Field game going on at Petco between the Dodgers and the Padres. Down low, it's 10 7 LA. You don't see many 10 7 games at Petco Park. No, you don't. A lot of home runs in that game, too. Seven home runs in that game, two by. Just enough. To... Winds blowing out at Petco. Here's the 2 0 to Pagan. That's a strike. 2 and 1. Axford not throwing as hard as we saw him throw in Spring. Spring, he didn't give up a, a run. And he was a. Not rostered by D in the camp. Yep. With that job. Pagan line drive left field base hit his third hit. Again, he goes the opposite way. So here's Posey. Buster tonight is two for four. Posey going to try and do something the Giants have not been able to do tonight, and that's get a base hit with a runner in scoring position. They've got good speed in the base pass with Duffy and Pagan. And really great arms across the board in the outfield for the Rockies. And a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Duffy with good speed at second, the same with Pagan at first. Oh, two. Little cutter at 95. That's, that's the normal movement on his fastball. That's not something that he, you know, he has to really work to do. He's going to get that natural cut, and that has a lot to do with the high three quarter release that he has. Posey in a battle now, 0 and 2. Got him. And that's the position he wants to get you in because then he can throw that hard 12 6 curveball down below the strike zone. And that has always been a very effective strikeout pitch for him, even against great hitters. So a big strikeout. Maxwell, a two run home run in the sixth. We're in a crowd. No balls in one strike. This was the home run. 
not called a home run initially. But indeed, it went over the yellow line. Took a fastball from Scott Oberg that was away and went with it. And it was party time. And a line drive right at Kulowitzki. And that'll end the inning. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Time for a change thing speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up in break experts. New pitcher now for the Giants will be Jeremy Affel. Take a look at his numbers through eight games. 0 and 1 with a 1 5 0 ERA. He's off to a great start. Seven base runners allowed in six innings. Affel in his 14th year at the big league level. Played here in Colorado. Parts of two seasons. 2006 he came over. Played in 2007. So you see Belt into the game as well. So he's at first base. And the hitter is going to be Carlos Gonzalez. Who homered in his last at bat against Hudson. Gonzalez in his numbers against that felt, three for 16. Inside one ball and no strikes. That 2007 year for the Rockies is when they went to the World Series. Rocktober. Two and oh. And right now, Atlas has got to find the strike zone. Look, Huntley on deck. Right back to Affel, who will underhand it to Belt. One out. And Affel just got a hot hitter out to lead off an inning. That's huge. And here comes Bruce Bochy. So a job well done. So he gets Gonzalez on a 2 0 pitch. Whew. It blows him up, as a matter of fact. So Casillas coming in. One out here in the ninth. And we'll be back.
Five, that's when it's going to start. Giants and Rockies, well, the first pitch right around the top of the hour at one, and that'll wrap up this three game series. And the Giants, after the game, will then head to Los Angeles to start a three game series on Monday night. And they have something on the 30th that is very unusual. Day off. A day off. Santiago Casilla coming in now for the 10th time. This is a safe situation. He's been perfect in that regard. 5 for 5. 2 0 with a 2 2 5 ERA. Facing Nick Hunley, who's 0 for 3. And the pitch is high. One ball and no strikes. Look out. It gets into the strike zone. It's one ball and one strike. I always talk about the movements that Casilla can put on a baseball, and he's got five types of movement two types of fastball, or cut the ball, curveball, changeup. Finally, thanks, sir. So a cutter and not a hanger, but a nice job of going the opposite way, beating a pretty good pitch by Nick Hundley. Just staying down through it, nice top hand throw. And there's Hundley's reward. Duffy just not enough arm to get that one. So here's LeMay Who is one for three, and he takes a strike in his own one. Something, if anybody would be considered to be pitch hit for for the Rockies, it would be Stubbs, who's 0 for 18 for the whole bunch of strikeouts. This is a strikeout situation for Casilla. But Walt Weiss realizes this is a young season, looking for ways to get confidence for Stubbs, and he's letting him hit. He's got a left-handed hitter, Daniel Descazo, on deck, or at least on the bench, rather. Yeah, he probably have to. Be creative in finding an outfielder. Stubbs struck out in the seventh inning. Very fast runner. Not an easy guy to double up. On the ground, maybe a pair. That's one game tied. Duffy kind of rocking the hard place here. Realizing there was no play at first. 
or at home rather. And he just swipe tags LeBehu, but just not enough time to get the speedy stubs. And we start over. And uh, Tim Hudson still looking for his first win at Coors Field. And here's Blackman. The only shot you have is by trying to go to 4 6 3. It's the only shot you have. No strikes. And even at that, you probably don't get him. You know, it, everything just kind of went in slow motion there. He just didn't get enough ground ball to think 4 6 3. Then he had the thought to go home, but it wasn't there. Then it was panic time, get what you could get. Andrew Stubbs. Can definitely steal a base. You've got to pay attention to him. He has great speed. Runner goes. Here's Susak's throw, and it's nearly into the outfield, and they got him. Stubbs hit that bag so hard he couldn't stay on it. And that'll end the inning. Watch Stubbs hit the bag. No, it actually happened before that. Well, tonight, after Giants Post Game Live here at Comcast Sports Net Bay Area, you get coverage of the Warriors win Game Four, Money Pool from New Orleans, and you get highlights and reactions to this game. So the Rockies have a new pitcher, and it'll be Adam Ottavino, who has been sharing the closer responsibilities with John Axford. He's got good stuff. No ERA yet this year. 13 strikeouts at nine and a third. Mid to high 90s with a fastball, hard slider, very deceptive slider. And a changeup. He really collapses that backside, and then he's got a slight crossover step. And uh, a three quarter, maybe even a little bit of a low three quarter release. And it's, it's, it's a funky at bat. Two and zero to Susak, who's homered and doubled. The 
looking for something fat right here. And he gets a strike. Two balls and one strike. Now you're not going to look for that on a 2 0 pitch. You're just not. And Adovino has a lot of confidence in that pitch. He controls it well. Backs it up with another one and evens the count. So Susak regrouping mentally. And the 2 2. And it's high. 3 and 2. Giants get a lead off run. Take a look at that, that play at second base that ended it for the Rockies. And Stubbs had the base stolen. It was an errant throw. And his toe catches, and he just sort of skips right over the bag, rolls, cannot stay on. And for Crawford, who came back and stayed on the play, an easy tag out. And really kind of an embarrassing moment. Yeah, twisted that ankle. Here's McGee. McGee is two for four. He also had a line drive that was caught by LeMahieu. And he bounces this one to Arenado. And that is going to be a double play. And with two outs, here's Brandon Crawford. Eight time. That McGee has hit into a double play this year. And that would hurt. Crawford is 0 for 4. The pitch high. Not giving in to a 1 0 count with a fastball. He comes out of again with a back foot breaking ball. And that's the type of a pitch if you swing at it, you kind of have a little uh, conversation with yourself after you do. I'm going to go try and throw it again. Look out, that almost got caught for two balls in one strike. Talk about if you have a little funkiness in your delivery, how it can upset the timing of the hitter. Well, Adovino's got that funkiness in it, but he's also got electric stuff. Nothing usual about this guy and what he features. Crawford hits one up the middle and a base hit. And that'll get belt to the plate. Brandon Belt. Went three for three in the game last night. The line score is the same four runs on 11 hits for both teams. Overshift is on. Takes high and away.
Belt has really been putting together a good swing and and really has put together a good strike zone. He's not gone out of it very often as he's starting to warm up. No pitch. Belted call time. Well, that's a break for Ottavino. Belt in the last five days or so has put 50 points on his bat average. To Brandon Bell. Trying to throw that flat cut at 88. So, well, in the driver's seat here, 2 0, oh, but doesn't mean you're going to get a challenge fastball from this guy. He likes to throw that flat cut right at the belt of left handed hitters. Way out in front, two balls in one strike. Gonzalez really given Belt the line and right. They're bunching Belt. Line and left is there as well. Crawford goes. Swing and a miss. Here's the throw. And it goes into center field. It'll be a stolen base for Crawford. That's his first of the year. And now Belt's got a chance to knock him in. One well, thing about Ottavino is he's very slow out of the stretch, and the Giants took advantage of it. Crawford goes down. I don't think he sees this ball. If he would have, he might have been able to pop up and go over to third. But nevertheless, they get a runner in score position. And they are looking for that hit. They have not been able to get tonight. 0 for 12 with runners in score position. Two two pitch on the ground, and LeBehu knocks it down, and he'll throw him out. Bottom of the tenth inning coming up. For the 10th inning. And Javier Lopez comes into the game with the Rockies have a two left hand or make that Blackman a leadoff hitter, a left handed hitter coming up. See the numbers for Lopez, 10th game that he's come into. Lopez.
Lopez. Give you a mid to high 80s fastball from a few different angles. Curveball slider to change up. Lopez broke into the big leagues in 2003 with these Colorado Rockies. So here's Blackman. If Charlie Blackman shaved off his beard and walked down the street. I would not no, I don't think anybody would. I'd have no chance. He takes a strike and it's all in one. He's two for eight in his career against Lopez. Pulled on the ground foul, so it's nothing at two. Daniel Descalzo is in the on deck circle. Maxwell in right field. Blackman's retired. And here's now it won't be Descalzo, it'll be McHenry. Well, Weiss, the skipper of the Rockies, started this game with four extra men on the bench. And now he's got one. He's using his backup catcher. McHenry. One left handed hitter, Daniel Descalzo, and he's the only guy they have left on that pitch. So, who's supposed to get away from McKinney to get introduced, and then Javier Lopez will exit the game. Joe Panic's going to come in. So, Panic will come in for Duffy. Actually, that's not true. Duffy's going to move to short. Actually, we're not sure. It's going to be McGee that's leaving. One for three for me. I think that's good. It's a 300 hitter. All right, Gene Machi's coming in. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Gene Machi now is the new pitcher. Take a look at the numbers for Machi. It's the 10th time that he has come into a game. 12 base runners and in nine innings pitch, five strikeouts against those four walks. A little bit 90s fastball, a little slider and fork ball. He's not allowed a home run this year. But 
give up in. Casey McHenry, who's got one hit in two at bats lifetime. Duffy now at third. Panic at second. Casey McGee is out of the game. One out, nobody on in a tie game. And the first pitch goes to the backstop. And it's one ball and no strikes. Yeah, get used to the mound. Yeah. You can't let him get too comfortable up there. That's, that's effectively wild. But Machi, you don't worry about him throwing strikes. He does have outstanding command. Except on that last pitch. Hit into the upper deck down the right field line. Look at Michael McHenry, and I mean, you don't have to know his position; you just have to look at him and know that he's a catcher. Five nine, two hundred five pounder, but he can run. He's not your typical catcher in regards to speed. He'll put heat on a play, especially a slow rolling ball to the left side of the infield. He is capable of beating that out. The faithful hanging in there. Yeah, they brought their blanket. Two balls in one strike. Duffy, fair ball. Two outs. How the Giants fans with their gear on, their blanket. If there's any fan base on this planet that's well equipped to deal with a little coolness in the air, it would be Giants fans. In July. Yep, that'd be right. Paul well, Weiss is in a conversation now with John Hirschbeck. I think that he thought that ball was foul. I think that's what his argument is. I think he's trying to figure out if Bruce Bochy has got the lineup card right. Ball hit the line. And it has to. It doesn't have to land at fair ground once it hits the ground before the bag. And once it gets past the bag, it is the call of the third base umpire. That's close. Very close. So here's Tulowitzki. There's a strike to Tulowitzki. Be careful because you know what he's going to try to do. Well, he's trying to hit one into the parking lot. Which he almost did in the third inning. Not close. One ball and one strike. Well, here's that swing of about the third inning. The second home run of the year. And this was an extremely long potato. 423. Tight little slider, perfectly placed. If you're looking to try and pull that location, good luck. Not that he has to pull the ball to hit it over the wall at this ball ball. Any coming up, it remains four to four.
created by Tiffany and Company, identical to the rings given Giants players and coaches, and the ring will be personalized with your last name. Purchase tickets at sfgiants.com slash ring ref. Minimum purchase price is 10 bucks. Proceeds will benefit the Giants Community Fund. So check it out. They're unbelievably gorgeous. And one lucky Giants fan is going to get it. New pitcher now for the Colorado Rockies will be Brooks Brown. Ninth time that he has come in. Sinker slider guy. And he'll run it up there low to mid-90s. He's also got a change up he'll feature. Does not give up a lot of home runs. And it'll be Aoki Duffy and Pagan. Panic moves into the cleanup spot on the double switch. So here's Nori Aoki. Runs up to Bun and he takes a strike. He has walked. The last three times he's come to the plate. That's the good news. The bad news is, is he hasn't scored. One ball and one strike. And the Let's Go Giants cheers. <laughs> Giants fans on the road are amazing. And you'll hear it every night. They'll pick their time. Oh, yeah. Break out the gloves. They've got a whole bunch of goodies in that bag. Well prepared. You are not playing with children. When you come about, talk about Giants fans coming to it. Ballpark that might be cold. And it's two and two on the call strike. Change up there on a generous call. And I hope he does not believe it. That changes everything. I mean, a three one count, two two count, that's a big deal. And this two two count, I mean, Brown could give him his best bit of nastiness to try and have him chase out of the strike zone. You got to protect. Three and two. The leadoff walk here would be good news. Here's the payoff. And he stays alive by spoiling that three two pitch. Watch the lower body. It almost looks like it's heading out to first base. You think, how can he cover the outside part of the plate that he does? And that's his style. And he stays alive again. He definitely gets momentum going down the first baseline. But he hangs in there long enough to get play coverage. And really one of the better opposite field hitters in the National League. Righties and lefties. Not close. Easy take there. Four straight walks for Aoki. Now the Giants need to break the string of him not scoring. Here's Duffy. That's Unusual situation. for Duffy, Mike. He doesn't have a hit. First time in Oakley's career, he's had a four walk game. And you're right about Duffy. I mean, he's usually pretty steady. And because of that, it may be pretty easy for Bruce Bochy to put the butt sign on. We'll see. Yep. He shows bump. There's a change up to first. Duffy shows bunt late, and there's a good bunt. 
And Marnot's only play will be the one they hear. Textbook perfect. Let that ball on the first baseline. It's nice when you're bunting to have somebody at first base that can run. And Aoki certainly can be, is that guy. But nevertheless, job well done by Duffy. Here's Pagan. Pagan's had a good night. He's three for five. Jazz trying to change that stat. They have not been able to get the, the money hit in the runners in score position all night long. Long and they've had 13 whacks at it. Back on. And a base hit. And they're going to hold up Aoki. Almost ran through that. Well, four hits now for Pagan. Roberto Kelly, respectful of the three arms that are out there. They're above average across the board. Blackman in left, Stubbs in center, Gonzalez in right, and that's why he held him up. But Aoki was surprised by it. Looked like he almost lost both shoes trying to stop and get back to the bag. So here's Panic taking his first at bat. Two for five in the game last night. And he bumps this one to Morneau. They're going to come home, not in time. Aoki read it perfectly, and the Giants take the lead. Well, that was the key to the successful play. Panic is a guy who has excellent back control, and you can do a number of things with him in this situation. And Aoki. Saw that that ball was going to get down. That was the only risk. If he goes down there and that ball's caught, it, this this inning's over. It's a double play. But he saw that it was going to get down and swings an outside route. And Hundley could not come back with a swipe. Beautifully done by Panic. And everybody saw it. Got to be what? Fuller's choice, sacrifice, RBI, and here's Maxwell. Now Maxwell with men in scoring position in the ninth inning lasered one right at Tulowitzki. Oh, he's hot. He's had good thoughts all night. And he's tardy and it's all in one. This puts change up. Take a look at the slide going the outside path. There was his lane of opportunity. And I don't think Hundley could have made, could have played any different. But he has to give a lane. Yep. High a strike to Maxwell. 0 and 2. With the possibility. That Machi might come up this inning. Contos is up in the bullpen. But right now, Maxwell is behind in the count, 0 and 2. Takes it. It's one and two. Giants fans standing. Rockies fans sitting. 
simple contrast in emotion. Maxwell gone. So the same pitch he got the first strike with, he comes out and finishes him off with. Well, here's Susak swinging the bat tonight. He's got a home run and a double and a walk. He got speed at second in Pagan. And right now, Brown can really pick as to who he wants to pitch to. Susak and Hector Sanchez. Susak out of play on the first pitch. This was his home run of. Line drive right down the line. Yeah, it's a strong man's home run. Just a low liner that got way out of here. On the ground to Tulowitzki. And that will end the inning. Giants take the lead. We'll head to the bottom of the 11th. It's 5 4. Tonight after post game live right here on Comcast Sports Net Bay Area. You get highlights of the Warriors win. Monty Pool from New Orleans. And you get the highlights from this one. Yep. The faithful. We love our faithful. Yes, we do. And they are entertaining. Sprouter Glove likes the baby giraffe. Total gamer baby. It'll be Morneau, Arenado in Gonzalez facing Gene Machi. Morneau has a couple of hits. He has faced Machi in his lifetime just twice, and he's. 0 for 2. It's actually 0 for 2 with a walk. There's a call strike. And a base hit. So he goes down and beats the fourth ball on a 0-1 count. And just like that. The Rockies get a lead off it. I'm not even surprised by that. No, it's Coors Field. So here's Arenado. Arenado is hit into two double plays on the year.
strikes low, one ball and no strikes. And that's where you should be missing right now. If you miss, you should be missing down below the strike zone. And one thing about Arenado, I mean, he wants to be a hero. He will expand his zone in these scenarios. This is going to slice foul. It's a ball and a strike. In a strike, the ground missed by much. Arenado one for eight against Machi in his career with a walk. And a quick toss, and Morneau is back. Crawford shading Arenado a step or two to pull. Panic at double play depth. Three and one. And this becomes a very big pitch. You cannot walk somebody in the score position that you have to challenge. So he's got to get in there. A big part of the strike zone. And Arenado will definitely try and let out some shaft here. Duffy. Panic. Felt. Do that. Yeah, and if you went back and looked at all the pitches and where he missed. He stayed down around the knees trying to get that ball that he just got. And he does on a 3 1 count. Well, you're not out of the woods yet. No, you're never out of the woods here. It's cool field. And we talked about the power that is so equally distributed up and down this Rockies line. If any one of these guys can take you deep. And I know for a fact that that's what this guy's thinking. That's his mindset anyway. One ball and no strikes. Hundley is on deck. If you get in a spot where you have to throw a strike with a fastball, you, you don't have to throw him a strike. Well, what the Giants have seen with Gonzalez the last two days is that he's starting to he's starting to get hot. And they watched him hit a long home run earlier in the sixth inning. So you're right. You don't have to give this guy. You got three bags to mess around with. Pitch to who you want to pitch to. Delt. And the Giants are going to win this one. Hard to win games here at Coors Field in extra innings, but they did it tonight. And that is a very nice win, I got to tell you. Well, it's it just another laugher. It is never easy in this ballpark, but it's just tremendous defense and great pitching tonight. And that was the difference. Giants baseball. Ulcers. <laughs> Final score. Giants five. Rockies four. Stay tuned. Insurance Giants post game live starts right now.